Hi, this is going to be a little video about how to identify spiders that you see in late summer and early autumn uh, which come towards houses. Now if there will be four arachnophobes it will be a little bit frightening but if you want to be able to identify these spiders you do need to know what they look like so you can tell them apart and not be as frightened about them because most of the time they're not going to harm you. Now here is an exact picture of the largest spider I ever encountered, which was a giant house spider, as they call them. And it was exactly 23 millimeters long with a leg span of 11 centimeters. And as you can see, compared to my hand there, although it's big, this is the biggest I ever saw. So even the biggest, it's not that big compared to other spiders. And bear in mind, the legs aren't usually stretched out like that. So. There will be a little bit, it might be a little bit frightening for some people, but just watch, bear with me, and you'll learn about what they are and not to be frightened of them. Here you can see a large house spider. I'm going to catch it in this jar. <coughs> That's how you catch a house spider. You can see it there. It's a male of the giant house spider but it's uh, not actually a, a large specimen they can get a lot better a lot bigger than that but that's just how the best way of catching them uh, you need a big sweet jar and then find somewhere where there might be a female and dump them there drop them off well this is a male heretigona house spider formerly taken area and this is the giant house spider and this is a male there's no point trying to handle him because he's so quick he'll just run off uh, they're very difficult this being the male they have much longer legs now the interesting thing about it is this one isn't fully grown by any means they can get much larger but look at those two palps at the front of the head you'll see they're like little feet with clubs at the end that's how you know it's a male and they have longer legs than the female and uh, that's all to help them with their seduction of females because the female is a heavier creature with shorter legs but she can actually kill the males they don't generally kill the males the males usually will live for a few weeks in a web and then run off before the young are, are born and sometimes you'll see actually very old ones who've lived a long time uh, and they get very big really big the biggest spiders you will see biggest house spiders you will see will be these ones uh, the, the males of these but this guy as you can see here against my hand as big as he is he's not that big i mean it's pretty big but uh he could be much larger than that i've seen some gigantic ones um, by gigantic you often think they're bigger than they actually are uh, the body would be maybe 23 millimeters long that would be the longest i've ever found uh, the legs would be pretty long, but that would that would probably be a female. Uh, the males have a lighter body. Um, so, male maybe two centimeters long, which is roughly two thirds of an inch. Uh, but their legs are so long, and th that's what frightens people. And they're very fast. They're the fastest running spider known. So, uh, and they don't hurt. They don't bite or anything. It's just that they're so fast that they, they're frightening. They do look a little bit like the Brazilian wandering spider and I think there, there could be something, some sort of a genetic memory somehow involved in people's fear of this spider. Then again, there is a species that's related that does bite. There you can see. Very, very fast spider. So fast that you almost can't see it. A large house spider here and it's dead 
and it's being killed by this spider here which is a long bodied cellar spider also known as a rafter spider and this is a looks like a female house spider she's pretty big very large fangs and uh, that's often what happens to uh, big spiders to get killed by these guys which are actually social spiders because you'll notice there's another spider up there creepy and interesting so if you don't like spiders that are big and hairy keep one of those in your house so it has a pretty big meal there but you can see this raptor spider is pretty big Okay, the dinner is over, or is it? No. Going to secure it a little bit better with more web. Oh, there you go, that's a pretty big meal. Spider hunting spider. This is a false widow and it's a Seatora Grossa. It's a decent size but not gigantic. They're more black than the other ones. Uh, they scare easily too. Not a gigantic spider but very shiny, very black, very bright shiny eyes too on top that are very noticeable. Really interesting, very poisonous bite, but uh, it can easily be cured if you get it in time. But you shouldn't take chances with bites that are as strong as these spiders produce. This is the smaller of the two false widows, but it's pretty big. The other one can get to be a good bit larger. This is a, a large Steatoda nobilis false widow. She's pretty big. She's getting back into her house. These are two hammock web spiders, Narina species. The male is at the front, he's skinnier with longer legs. And at the back you can see the female, she's more stuffy. They're kind of like false widows to look at, uh, but they're usually outside and their web is very weak by comparison to a false widow's web. They're very beautiful spiders, but it's hard to see it from this angle because they're always upside down in their webs. This is a Suggestria spider. They're a hunting spider that walk along walls and run along the ground. They don't really make, they do make webs, but they don't really concentrate on their webs. The webs they make are famously trip wires. They usually hide in a hole in the wall. And the web is basically a series of trip wires. And if you trip one of the wires, the spider runs out and bites. But there's a larger species, which is venomous to humans, which is also found in Europe. And this is a flower crab spider, which is the largest crab spider species. And it's on a potentilla, waiting to ambush either a hoverfly or a bee. And uh, they have quite potent toxins, but they don't, they're not really known to bite people. And usually if you get too close or you're sniffing a flower, the spider will drop out of the flower on a sort of a abseil line. 
the wind is blowing the flower a little bit, that's why it's vibrating. The spider walks on four small legs when it's ambushing and has the large front legs to use like crab claws. It walks sideways as well. And here's another one, the better flower. You can see waiting for it to ambush. They have very big yellow eyes. They're very slow moving spiders though. Very handsome, very exotic. And they can change colour to a limited degree between white and yellow and sometimes verging on green. Sometimes even a little bit verging on blue. Yeah. Right, this is a decent sized female garden spider. See, she's very, very colorful. Beautiful patterns. And a big white cross on her back. They make a classic spider web. And they're no harm to anybody, but people often find them very frightening because they're so exotic looking. And they, they are very beautiful spider, but they, a lot of people think they can't possibly be from Ireland or in fact Europe. But uh, a lot of very beautiful spiders are, and even quite large ones like this. Now here's a garden spider, female, large female, in her web. You can see it's a classic spider web. She's a muscular creature. The web's beautiful. She tears it down every day and makes it again. She doesn't really come into houses. 